1680. WOKB Winter Garden Orlando. Welcome to another edition of Real Family Talk. This is your host, Jay Real. Hope everybody's having a great Tuesday night. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Real Family Talk. This is your host, Jay Real. Hope everybody's having a great Wednesday evening, a nice hump day. It's a beautiful day in the city today. There's no rain. Finally, it seems like it's raining every day for the last two weeks. <laughs> That's what it felt like. That's what it felt like anyway. So I'm so happy that uh, tonight is no rain. I might be able to get a, a bike ride in tonight. We'll see what happens, man. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and welcome everybody into the building here. We got uh, Mr. King's in the building. How you doing, Mr. King? All right, all right, all right. I'm in the building. I'm a little sick, but you know, I'm here. He's here. Uh, Jeremy's in the building. How you doing, a.k.a. younger brother? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm good. Bless as always. Hump day. <laughs> I'm inside today, you know, I feel weird. I ain't been in here in about a year, it seemed like. Is that how long it's been, brother? Yeah, uh, you know, we got Mr. King in the booth. Let's see you how got it? Goes. it? You good over there, right, Mr. I'm King? I'm the one that started the booth. <laughs> okay, okay, we're just making sure. I you told know. you the booth. No, you okay, uh, okay. <laughs> better is in the building. How you doing, better? Hey there. Better. She's better. She's Bless. better. And joining me tonight, uh, I haven't seen this lady. It's been a couple of months now, actually. I know. Yes. It's, it's been it a couple of months We've now. But Miss uh, Miss Jasmine Bernie's in the building. How you doing, Jasmine? I'm well. How's everyone doing? We're doing great. We're doing Jasmine. great. Good. Doing I'm so great. happy to be back. It feels like home. Oh, I, I <laughs> appreciate that. That's good. No, it home is home. where the heart is. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get into some some topics tonight. The first one I want to talk about tonight um, it is, you know, if you've been paying attention to the sports news anyway, Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy's catching some flack, y'all. Some flack because Tony Dungy was honest the other day. Somebody asked him an honest question about Michael Sam and whether or not if he was still coaching, whether or not he'd draft Michael Sam. Tony Dungy said he thinks that Michael Sam should basically have the opportunity to be in the league, but he would not draft him because he wouldn't want the, that kind of distraction on his team. He just wasn't about that, he said. So he said no. And, of course, after saying that, oh, Tony Dungy Tony, this. Yeah. Tony, Tony. I thought Tony was a Christian. I thought Tony was fair and equal to all people. This, that, and the third. And he came back and he said, one, I stand by my statement. I wouldn't have brought him on my team. <laughs> but I do think. Uh, that he should deserves to be in the league. And he's in the league. But Tony's catching flight because he was honest and said he wouldn't draft him because he didn't want that kind of distraction. Give me your opinion, uh, Jeremy. What do you think? Is, is this a big deal or, is, or is, is someone once again getting in trouble because they had the gall to be honest? Well, the first thing you know, you is... Can't be honest there the today. first thing you have to remember is training camp getting ready to start and we need some attention on the NFL. <laughs> That's number one. You got to remember that. And everything you do, and they, or everything they, they, they do, you remember everything is about drawing attention. Drawing attention, that's number one. Number two, personally, I don't believe it's a big deal because simply, like you said, he stated his opinion. He didn't it, – it's one of them things, like we talked about before, anytime you say anything against what everybody think is supposed to be okay or, or – or, I don't know, anything with a dissent in the popular opinion, you know, everybody's going to crucify you. You know, I mean, even going back to well, we talked about the Donald Sterling thing. You know, we feel like, yeah, he was wrong. But personally, you know, I don't think necessarily they should snatch the team. But I understand why the NBA would remove him because, you know, it's in their best interest. You know, it's the same the same concept. It's a similar concept, I should say. It's, it's you know, it's like, oh, you know, he can't say that. That's discriminatory or whatever the case may be. You know, he never said he hated the man. He never said the man shouldn't play football. He never said any of that. He just said he wouldn't have drafted him because it's not worth the um the, the media attention. Got it. Especially being a seventh round pick. You know, people keep forgetting about that. You know, everybody's concentrating on his sexual orientation. People for, keep forgetting about this man was drafted in the seventh round, which means eight out of ten times he's not gonna make the team. You know. That's not saying he won't make it, but the chances are very, very slim. And if you if you if you've been if you kinda of follow football, everybody when you talking about sixth round and back you know, you 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 got to be a, a mouse on the team. You know, you don't want anything drawing attention to you that's not saying that, oh, he's a good football player. 
There you go. Ms. McCray, you got a point? You want to say something, Mr. McCray? You know what? I can't speak on it fully because I, don't, I, I remember or I know that some type of controversy is going on, but I don't know what his statements were specifically. Did he say that he was just a distraction or a distraction because he was gay? He didn't no. say neither one of those. He, he said, just, said, he just was, said he'd be a distraction on the team. Then at, that's it is has caused an issue even his statement has caused an issue so yes in that case it would cause a distraction but i don't he probably shouldn't have said it in this climate he can't but, be honest in this climate i mean then they criticized him because of course you know he was one of michael vick's biggest advocates right yeah they so, getting on about that so they were Not saying only. how how are you going to be michael vick's advocate when clearly when he came back to the league some people would say he was a huge a distraction, distraction. Yeah. um but now michael sam so that that was also a part of the the underlying reasons for those who wanted to disparage his comments. Right. Well, One let, of the things that they they criticized him on. Let me interject this, and um, well, if, if on outside the lines today, of course, you know they had to talk about this. And one executive, the the, the good point he brought up was he's he's been an executive in the NFL. So when he when Tony Dungy said that he understood it from an executive standpoint, <laughs> saying that. Because, you know, they also jumped on They said Chip Kelly called Tony Dungy about the Riley Cooper situation. And, and, and uh, Tony Dungy was behind Riley Cooper saying on the team as well. You know, and he, and he was saying, and what the executive was saying was, you got to understand when people talking about distractions or coaches talking about distractions, there's a balance between the distraction and the talent. You first round, <laughs> you, you ain't no such thing as a distraction. You can right. do almost anything you want to do because you're first round, your first round talent. So we go put up with some mess. Till we find out if this is really you had this talent. The lower you start getting on the talent pool, the less the room you have for error. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So you know, people keep forgetting that they they just jumping right to the one thing, and that's it. Might not it might be that, but I don't know. But it might necessarily it might not be that because you have to weigh that out when you're talking about professional sports in general. You have to weigh that out. Is your talent good enough for me, for me to deal with whatever is uh distraction or attention or whatever the case you may be is coming toward you if i can interject go yes, ahead please um, <laughs> i don't know anything about the talent poll the variations the draft rounds i know nothing about any of that mm-hmm. what i do know is that you have a young man who enters into the league knowing that he is um someone who chooses to be homosexual mm-hmm. you have an entire league of men who have character flaws beyond belief yes mm-hmm. and we deal with their controversies when they happen mm-hmm. and we help them through those processes yep. we don't kick them off the team unless legally they have to go to jail for murder which has already happened to some of these football players yes, it has. so i don't think that this is any different from any of the other players on the team. It just so happens that you know what his sexual orientation is and the entire world does up front before this man gets into the league. Deal with it delicately. Mm -hmm. I understand that you're a football player. I understand you're a football coach. This may not be something that you know how to handle, but you can pay someone to help you. Yeah. Yeah. You have resources to do that. Figure it out. Then Yeah, right. But then there comes the question, does the owner want to pay does the only one to pay? <laughs> yeah. why and would then it? two, <laughs> why is he good they enough? Is he good enough? Yeah, is he good enough? And enough? that really is a big thing because just like you said, there's a lot of character flaws. Mm-hmm. But you six round pick your character flaw. Bye, see you. Yeah, yeah. good example. Don't got time for your character flaw. <laughs> you know, good, good example right now. The Cleveland Browns. Um, what's the what's the wide receiver's name? Josh. I can't think of the last name. Um, um, oh man, we were just Cribs. talking about him. No, it's not Chris. No, it's not Chris. Oh, we were just talking about him. I can't think of his last name. But anyway, um, this particular wide receiver has had continuous drug problems since he's been in the league, along with other issues related to alcohol. Just got suspended this year for a full year because he's violated the drug and alcohol policy yet again, the third time that he's done that. Gordon. Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon. But last year, even after missing two games in the season, he was the leading wide receiver in terms of yards. So in 14 games, he did more than everybody else who played 16 games. Right. Um, so so that so therefore, when he got suspended, what did they do? They said, all right, we're going to put him. We'll just, he got to go on the shelf. We don't <laughs> right. have a choice about that. <laughs> yeah. but, but let's wait and see. When you come back. <laughs> what happens at the end of this year, and let's see if he's improved, if he's the same, and then we'll make a decision. Why? Because the boy – is talent. Good. Talent. It, it, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it, 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 and I'm not saying it's right either. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's right, but I mean, that's that's when you're talking about sports entertainment. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. 
he probably it just shouldn't have been said like that. He's not a coach anymore. Mm. Um, his job now is a commentator. He's an analyst, yeah. He's Which an is analyst. why he said it. They, they asked him a question. Yeah, but yeah, they, they were interviewing him, and he asked they asked him a question, and he, he basically answered it. He mm, and, yeah. he, and that's no. what he does, right? Uh, but he's a well respected coach, right? right. And Very, he has influence, which right. makes this mm-hmm. even worse, that's probably. The problem, mm-hmm. right? He has influence over other coaches who probably say, you know what, we probably don't want to make this decision either. But, but you it know, was his opinion about mm-hmm. the question that was asked him was his opinion. He said, it w- if it was me. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's what he's saying. Right, right. Exactly. I wouldn't have this as a distraction on my team. What, in other words, what he was really saying, just to break it down to reading between the lines, is like, look, I'm bringing you, you on this team. We're going to have to put all this other stuff to the side. You're going to have to humble yourself like negative five right now mm-hmm. until we see what you really made of, and let's deal with it during the preseason trial. And if you make the cut, you make the cut. My, might I add, Michael Sams was the number one leading defensive ta- uh, defensive end this past year in the toughest division in college yeah, football, he was, which he was is in the SEC. Player, yeah. Yes, he was. But so, I don't think that he's not humble. I think the attention is coming from the media and everyone who's fascinated uh, with now this we story. Now we talk. Not him. Right. Yeah. It's it, not it, him. Yeah, it, 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 it is. It's not him by itself. Now, now let's just be honest. He's playing he, into he, it. He so. had – I'm, I'm not – you know, some of that stuff, you know – it's out of his control, obviously. But then some of the stuff, like when you when we were talking about the draft, we were talking about this earlier, around the draft when they had the reality show and he agreed to do that, you know, all that, all that kind of attention and stuff that I would say somebody should advise him, like, you don't need to do this right now. You need to wait till at least after you make the team. Then we can talk about this stuff because, again, that's part of the distraction Tony Jones was talking about. So, because the reality um, camera, they had to sit down and say, no, we're not going to do this right now. They had to deal with all that. And then, obviously, you know, just because of the situation, him being the first openly gay, you know, it's going to be a lot of media attention. But it's, it's all in the same boat. Yeah. Coming out of college, oh, how much you going to pay me? How much I'm going to get? Mm-hmm. Pfft, let's do it. Mm-hmm. The man just getting paid. I, I, I'm not saying he's wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's wrong for doing the reality show. I'm not saying. I'm not saying the idea yeah, is not wrong. Yeah, but was it a great but decision the timing, at that time? The, That's I, would, I would say no because we look where we at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know they, what I'm saying. They shut Oprah down. Yeah. If they if he wanted to be taken seriously and he wanted to be considered a serious player, right. then yes, he should not have considered. Yeah. Right. Um, he should have just moved forward with his original right. um, plan, and that was to play football. Because, but, and, and as a former football player, right now the time, right now he just got to show himself approved. Mm-hmm. Right? Can exactly. you hit? Can you maintain? Can you, can you, you stay it? with the big dogs? Because in college, is one level. Now we on a professional level. level. Every, everybody's good. Grown men. Grown everybody's men. fast. Everybody's strong. There's no no no, no weak slips. no weak people there. You know, especially right. you coming off the end on them tackles. You know. Three, three, four. That fullback coming at you. Ooh. That def- that offensive lineman coming at you. Yeah. So you better either take it or buy. Go home. Go home. And, and he gonna have his opportunity. You know, which but is all he ever just wanted. Get off anyway. my man Tony Dungy. I, I'm a Tony Dungy fan. I am too. I am so, too. That's you know, why I'm like to talk Tony about Dungy. He said what he said. It was his opinion, just yeah. like everybody else's opinion. It was their opinion. Everybody tripping about LeBron James going back to Cleveland. I'm it's not. their opinion. Go back to Cleveland. Uh, I'm, I'm just glad <laughs> he's doing this to he, me, man. I'll be trying to go home. I'm glad he did. Bring up stuff like that. I'm glad he did what he wanted to do. That's what I. That's what I like. <laughs> I don't care what the decision was, as long as he do what he wanted to do. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So we'll, we'll keep it moving. But no, my point is is simply I'm just sick of being able to speak your mind, and then because you speak the truth. Then now you got to get criticized. Now you got to defend the truth. Yeah. Now you got to defend spoke. the truth, and everybody want to because thirty one other thirty one other teams, owners, GMs, and everybody they thought exactly the same thing. Yeah, he just Tony said Dungy it. Did, yeah. That's but the only thing. Yeah. He said it. He that's said the it. world around and us so today. That, that's, yeah. that's 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 anybody. All that's that's every way you go. Uh, all politicians all are the same way. They speak the truth about whatever it is that they want to talk about and give their opinion. Now they're gonna be criticized. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, so and so did such and such, such and such. Well, so and so did such and such, such and such. That you see, you, y'all see the ads. I ain't calling no name, but you see the ads. Oh yeah, <laughs> point blank. Oh yeah. Glad to know you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I watch. <laughs> Chain gang. Well, I saw it. I'm like, what in the world is going on around here? <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, we got uh, Miss Jasmine Bernie. She always brings me stories when she comes by. Jasmine, what you got for me today? Well, tonight I have two things that I want to talk to you about. Um, Number one, that is priority right now. Um, We are in the beginning of election or voting. We have a 
um, primary election that is coming up on August 26 for residents of Orange County um, and we want to make sure that everyone gets out to vote we want to make sure that they know who they're voting for where they need to be voting and that they're making informed decisions um, we have three options to vote in this primary election and I want to make sure that you gather this information um, and, and to find out where you need to vote to find out what these three options are and I'm going to share them with you but so that you have this information printed um, the website is ocfelections.com this is your supervisor of elections website this is where you can find all the information you need to know for your individual self for your family members for your friends and you can share this information with them again that's ocfelections.com now the three ways that you can vote in this upcoming election taking place on august 26 2014 that is a tuesday um, you can go to the polls on that particular day from 7 a.m to 7 p.m you will be sent a ballot in the mail along with the precinct that you are designated to vote in again you'll receive this in the mail um, you'll receive a sample ballot that will give you an opportunity to fill that ballot out um, do some research on the candidates to find out who they are what their issues are and how you um, would like to make your decision on voting you then have the option to absentee vote or vote by mail. It's the same thing. When you hear absentee, you hear voting by mail. This gives you the option to request an absentee ballot, um, either on the phone, online, or going into the supervisor of elections office. They will then mail a ballot out to you prior to the election. You have until election day to submit that ballot, but you have until the 6th, day prior to the election which is a Wednesday to request that absentee ballot so again the option is to vote by absentee or by mail you can request that in person over the phone or online they will then mail that ballot to you um, the great thing about absentee ballot and or voting by mail is that you have um, an opportunity to look at your ballot just like you would your sample ballot but you receive this a little bit earlier and you have an, an extended period of time to really um, bite into the information and find out who these candidates are see all the names yes see and, all the names and go name by name and google them that's what i said correct <laughs> but not only that i don't know if you remember in 2012 we had a pretty lengthy ballot where we had about 12 ballot initiatives yeah. we only have two Two in this primary, we only have two ballot initiatives, um, and I'll, I'm sure I'll be back to talk about that at a later date, but there are only two on this particular ballot. So they're pretty easy to, to digest. It just determines how you feel about each of those issues. And then the third way to vote is through early voting. And early voting allows you 10 days prior to election day on August 26th to go in and vote. So they give you a good 10 days to choose one of 15 locations to go to so it depends on where you live at it doesn't depend on where you live at it doesn't depend on where you work wherever you are you see an early voting location as in. long as you're in that time frame you get to go in cast your ballot what is that monday through friday it, it will be monday through the sunday prior to the election so every day monday through the sunday prior to the correct election. and it's from 10 a.m to 7 p.m so you um, you have all That's those convenient. days to go. That it's, is convenient. I agree. That I think convenient. it's convenient also. It, even you can go in on your lunch break, especially if you already have your sample ballot. Um, you already have it filled in. You can take that sample ballot into the booth with you. Make sure that you copy it, that information down onto the ballot that you're going to turn into the supervisor or to the voting place that you're located at. Submit it and you're good to go. Now this is uh, Orange County or this is the entire state? Um, everyone in the state is going to have um, a primary where they live at, and their ballots are going to look different depending on um, the sort of races that they have. The early voting, though, that, is that statewide? Oh, yes. Early voting um, takes place everywhere. Um, the days, the amount of days, however, differ for some places, but Based most the of the state, um, there are 10 days that will allow you to do this. And remember, they also shortened that in 2012 from 14 um, to 10. Correct. I, and actually, I think it was 14 to 8 days um, in 2012, if I can remember, if I recall correctly. But, um, yep, so the three ways that you can vote. 
You can go to the polls on Election Day, August 26th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can vote by absentee or by mail. That's the same thing. And you'll receive that in the mail. You can mail that in or you can physically walk that into the Supervisor of Elections office. And or you can vote early at one of the 15 election uh, polling locations. See, you, you ain't got no excuse. You None. Got three different ways to vote. Mm -hmm. The the mail in, the absentee are convenient because you can request it and then mail it in at your at your leisure. Leisure. Correct. Or the early voting as well, easy because you can't go Monday through Friday. No problem. They open on Saturday. They open on Sunday too, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's all day. Yeah. There, there has to be a bigger turnout this time. I think the bathroom's open. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I would hope so. I, 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 so I would hope so. <laughs> I'm sure they're not. Hopefully they don't close the bathroom. Yes, okay. hopefully that <laughs> is All right, well, issue. I'll be there then. <laughs> <laughs> As an adult, I would caution you to handle certain things prior to getting well, to the poll. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, you have three ways to vote. There is no excuse. And the website, again, for the Supervisor of Elections Office for Orange County is ocfelections.com. And if you don't live in the county and you still need to find out where your Supervisor of Elections um, office is located at, you can visit the Florida Division of Elections website. You can Google search Florida Division of Elections, put in the county that you reside in, and it will take you directly to the county supervisor of elections website that you need. And all this information about early voting locations is readily available for you there. So like you said, there are no excuses. No and excuses. Everyone man. has the opportunity to vote. What was, was it last time? 10% of the people showed up to vote last time? Correct. Or less than 10, right? Less than, yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. You gotta hit 80 or 90. Do you, mm -hmm. want, you want changes to happen? You got to show up and vote. You do. Better? Why are you looking at me like that, better? Nothing. <laughs> we, ha we have to do better. You gotta, we got to do better. We got to do better. Awful. Turnout was awful last we time. We have to. And and it depends on what side of the uh, field you're on, how you feel about the results of that election. But um, I would say if you're not happy. I don't, I don't really care about the results. <laughs> just vote. That's all. Well, I, I would say vote. But just I would vote. say make sure that you vote informed. Vote informed, yeah. You know, we do that have too. one issue that um, people that are expecting a large number of minorities to come out on. And we discussed this a little bit earlier this year, and that is medical marijuana. We want you to make sure you look at the entire ballot, however, and not just one <laughs> item on no. the ballot. <laughs> My friend was asking about that, so I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, but that's in November, though, right? Please, Correct. Please that is. be in the ballot longer. box longer that than is. 30 seconds. <laughs> Go in there, check your box, well, and keep moving. there it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Yes, on that. Check yes. a couple more bubbles. <laughs> bubble in a couple more, just at least just to make it look weird. The entire <laughs> ballot would be great. Yes. But speaking of voting and how powerful your vote is and why it's so important for you to um, vote, today a court uh, made the decision in the Marissa Alexander case. And just to give you a little bit of background, Marissa Alexander is a young woman, a mother who um, was in a domestic violence dispute with her significant other who shot warning shots at him and did so pleading um, under the circumstances of stand your ground and as a result was sentenced to 20 years in jail. She was awarded a hearing on uh, later last year and was released from jail Thanksgiving of 2013, awaiting the hearing uh, results. And so they decided that um, Marissa could stay out on bond. She had a few complications dealing with that, but um, they were able to easily resolve her and sh uh, resolve that issue, and she was able to stay out on bond. But um, today they made a decision based on the hearing that there was not enough evidence, although new evidence was submitted, that there was not enough evidence to determine that um, she needed a different hearing to determine her to s determine her that her case was not. Um, a, a self-defense and or stand your ground sort of case. So what will happen is that she did file an appeal. The case will go back to trial and a juror of her peers will determine what her um, final verdict will be. This time around, however, um, Angela Corey has decided that she does not want to to give Marissa just 20 years. She wants to extend that time to 60 years instead this time around. So it, it Angela Corey's going in. Hold on. I mean, uh, she's, hey. just, she's so embarrassed. 
about the Zimmerman thing. She's going in. She's going in. No, this this is what we need to do. Everybody listening to me. And you can me, vote Angela Corey out. I would just just like to say everybody everybody <laughs> listening to me right now. Remember the name and do not vote for her. Yes. I don't care what color she is, what her, what her ethnic background is. This woman is crazy. Mm-hmm. This is not the first time. Even the, the um, Zimmerman case not even wasn't even the first time. No. Correct. This woman is crazy. Period. <laughs> and it shows you how powerful this woman is. Yes. How much power she has. And and we've the, we've given it to her. Voters have given her this much power. Yes, we did. You know, a, a non-vote is still we an got opportunity. Some <laughs> then we got some cords on that side of the <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Remember the name and do Corey, not yeah, yeah. That, allow that like a good thing. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be good on crime. 60 years. 60 years is what um, Angela Corey is asking this time around. Wow. If a court in this appeals case decides that she is still found guilty, is that legal? <laughs> well, evidently, I guess it yeah. is. Apparently, it is. Like, legal. Okay, it one is. sentence, twenty years. But they give you a new trial. Now we want to put you in sixty because, mm-hmm. just because you asked. Mm-hmm. That is correct. Because you questioned me. But that is also the risk that you run when the, filing an appeal. The, right. Filing those appeals. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess there ain't no difference. I mean, I, I take my chances. Now, uh, remind me, we were. I think you you brought it up before. Um, the law didn't they use her name for the law the warning shot bill the warning shot bill well they said it was created based on what happened in her situation Mm -hmm. but i what i imagine is going to happen and i'm no lawyer but i doubt that they'll be able to use that law in her defense because her crime happened before the law was enacted well that's what today's hearing was about that it cannot be retroactively um she can't be grandfathered into the law Uh because it happened prior to okay. this taking place. There you okay. go. Yeah, wow. and it, yeah, so it, sh- it will not be a factor unfortunately for her. So the law that was made inspired by my case, I can't use it for my own defense. It's the Got beauty it. of the justice system. Got it. That's mm-hmm. why the yes. justice system is so awesome. Got it. I understand. <laughs> okay. Basically, you fired the shot a couple of years too too early. Too year, too early. Mm. Wow. This summer, you'll be all right. Wow. Fire all the warning shots you need this summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Correct. Smoke that's, all you want to. That's just a <laughs> slap in the face. It is. And and there are so many circumstances surrounding it. The fact that she is a, a was a battered woman, mm-hmm. pregnant, mm-hmm. caring for this man's children. Mm-hmm. And did the, the thing that she was supposed to do. She filed a restraining order. Mm-hmm. He broke that. Mm-hmm. Right. He broke that by right. showing up to the house. And, and this is what I don't understand about Angela Corr. You're a woman. I mean, yeah, come on, at, 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 at a time where women are supposed to be together, this is it. <laughs> You're right. What are you thinking? Instead, you right. want to be even nastier, like 60 years. For, I, I don't know. It's, it just seems like for whatever reason they've made, they want to make an example of her. Yeah, that's what it um, seems like. And, and it just doesn't make any sense why she was chosen as the example when clearly – um, it, you know, I, I basically knew. when you look at the shot, they said there was some, you know, disparities in how the shot and where the shot was. But regardless of that, she put in place evidence to show that there was a history of abuse here. Mm-hmm. And so regardless of how the shot took place that day and some emotional state that she probably was in, there is a history of abuse here. And, mm-hmm. and to just ignore all that history of abuse and then to focus on where exactly the shot was that specific day. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man. Really? Really? Correct. Angela Corey, y'all. She, you vote her in. She gets voted in. <laughs> she gets voted in. She yes. gets voted in. So somebody is continually putting this woman in office, and I'm not saying she does a bad job, but and this somebody is just, put her in office. And this is just a case that we somebody know about. This is just a doing. case that is high profile right. and um, is in the forefront of the media. This There could be a number of different cases. And, uh-huh. and after... Yes. Trayvon Martin or the George Zimmerman trial, we learned about a lot of different people mm-hmm. who had a number of different issues. We didn't know that our state was just this torn up. I was at an event where a young man said that Florida um, is disguised by all the pretty palm trees and theme parks. <laughs> wow. What really happens here, no one really gets to see because they're distracted by the sunny weather, mm-hmm. the beautiful trees, well, I, and I, the fun I, I'm going to have to stand yeah. up from a state. Now, I don't think anything's happening here that is so different from what's happening across the country. Mm-hmm. But but I do agree with you, yes. In, especially in Orlando, mm-hmm. unless your name is Mickey, Walt, <laughs> <laughs> they they suppressing you because they obviously any kind of negative tourism 
uh, or negative events is yeah. going to affect tourism. And so we obviously don't want to to affect that. That's we why when you go on I Drive, the police presence is typically higher mm -hmm. than yes. it is and just a mile away from I Drive. I know. So, I mean, it makes sense. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, overall, I don't think what's happening here is so different from what's happening across the country. 407-894-1680 is the number, 407-894-1680. But his statement was just so powerful. Like he said, Florida is disguised by palm trees beaches and sunset what like yeah. that it's a whole lot of brothers feel like that's that. powerful mm -hmm. yes it, it is it wow. is and, and i will have to agree with you um j roll that what's happening what? here is you're right not any different from anywhere else but i think that we haven't seen it yeah. and we we haven't looked for it. we haven't searched for it. we didn't know that it was happening if we were talking about mississippi or, right. you know, something like that. We right. Oh, it's expected. That's normal. That's what's just happening there. But it's here in Mickey Mouse land. It's a little different. People aren't <laughs> expecting it. And, and it's, also, it's also the state that's dominated uh, by a Republican House and Senate, Florida House and Senate. So. Mm -hmm. But but that again, that, that that has to do. Better. I'm just saying, <laughs> these are your people. I just. <laughs> <laughs> but that has to do everything you with do. your vote, though. Right. We have the power right. to change all of this, and people don't believe that. But when you are not voting, when you don't go to the polls, when you're just sitting at home talking about how this is unfortunate, you're marching, you're holding up your signs at your rallies. What Votes. are you backing that up on? What are you backing that vote. up on? And have an no. educated vote. But that's the thing I want to say. Why you go march at a rally but not go go vote? Exactly. Yeah. That don't even make sense. That don't even make sense, brother. Doesn't make sense. Where, where are the I rallies rather, now? Where are the rallies now? I would rather you vote and not go where, to the rally. Where is the rally <laughs> so now? So this is what I had to tell a group of people who also had that same exact question. Where are the groups? Where are the people? Where are the press conferences? Where are all these things that were formed as a result? Right. They are still here. They are still working. They are still active. Because they're not in front of your television every single day, because mm -hmm. they're not marching down your street every single day, doesn't mean that they don't exist. You haven't done the work to continue to engage yourself in this issue. Uh -oh. You haven't done the work <laughs> to continue to find out what is really happening and how they're involved. Dream Defenders are still out there marching and fighting. And not only here in Florida, they've taken their efforts outside of the state. We have a number of different groups who are still very active, who are still participants, who are a part of Mar Marissa Alexander's support team. But because they're not in front of your television screen, you think that they don't exist. Mm -hmm. They do. They're still working. But you haven't proactively engaged. Not you specifically, but people just right. have not actively engaged. No, we talk um, about engaged. you. <laughs> <laughs> Fox and engaged. Engaged. Call me. Yeah. Shout call out me. to Philip Agnew. Call me. Real yeah. Family Talk at gmail.com. Hit me up. That's what I say. But uh, I appreciate that, uh, Miss Miss Bernie. You got anything else to add on those stories? That is it. I just I just want to make sure that people really get out this year. In 2010, it was just sickening to know that people did not get out and vote the way that they should have and felt like they were owed something. In 2012, I think the president and his team did more – it almost came into your home and drug you out of your home and took you to the polls. Yep. And put the pin in your hand yep. for you. For you. They shouldn't have to do this. This year, there's no sexy candidates. <laughs> the, the president the president isn't on the ballot. You can't you tell know? Charlie Chris he isn't sexy. Uh, <laughs> nobody's inspired by Charlie Chris. I don't know. Charlie Chris, I, I saw an article the, today. That, I saw an article today that said uh, Charlie Chris nor Rick Scott are inspiring the, the Florida voters. Mm. <laughs> Nobody's inspired by either one of these cats. Is it me or do they kind of look like cousins? <laughs> they probably oh are cousins, no. right? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> they probably are cousins. So, like I said, there's no sexy candidates. So you just got to you gotta get off get off your behind, go to the polls, and, and vote. Yeah. You know, get your, get your ballots, get your, um, get your early voting ballots, if that's what you choose to do. Oh, not early. Yeah, your, your absentee. absentee ballots, if that's what you choose to do, go vote early. Uh, get your sample ballots. See who is out there. There's a lot of signs. You go you go on the corner over here on, uh, what is it, John Young and uh, what's the name of that street? Is Columbia. Columbia. Mm -hmm. Thousands oh, yeah. of signs out there. <laughs> if you don't know, mm -hmm. at least if you're trying to vote in District 6, if you don't know who's voting, just go sit on the corner yeah, of Columbia on corner. and John Young. <laughs> Everybody that is, uh, is, fit, is fit in, in District uh, 6. too. <laughs> yeah, they're deep they're over out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, man, do your research. Do some homework. 
get a sample ballot and just go vote. You know, like I said, it's not about who you vote for. You know, do some research and pick the, the person you like the best, mm-hmm. but, but make a decision. Yeah. Don't sit at home and then complain come after November or come November when the two people, two of the people that are, the two people that are there, I should say, you're like, ooh, I didn't like either one of them. Well, did you go vote for the person you like? And did you <laughs> take someone else with you? There you go. Just vote, people. Treat yeah. it like church. Take vote. a friend. Can more than the, can more than two thousand people show up and vote for mm. candidates? That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Can more than two thousand? <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. Well, we only get two thousand. I'm running next time. <laughs> you gonna run? Brother? I think I can get a thousand of them. You can get a thousand of them. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only gonna get two thousand. I mean, you done made it easy for me. <laughs> I could just I could use Facebook and Twitter and do that. <laughs> We got Mr. King's over there on the board. Holding it down, baby. Get him out of there. He's, he's yes. got, he's got the right, sound right, effects. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. You're going to learn today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I got a couple more stories. It, it, Jasmine, if you can stay, just yes, chill please. out with us. Yes. Chill out yes, with yes. We, we got to talk we about. We need the balance in the room. We got to talk <laughs> about what happened in New York last week, y'all. Oh. What happened in New York with uh, Eric Garner. Mm. The, uh, if you haven't seen the video, I've, I've actually posted the story to the Real Family Talk Facebook page. But Eric Garner, New York man that got killed basically by the police because they put him in a chokehold and pretty much. Which is legal. Uh, which is illegal. That's what I'm saying. Which is illegal. Which is illegal and pretty much held him down so long that by the time they took it off of him, he was pretty much unconscious and then basically never recovered um, and has died. Essentially, from trying to have a conversation with the police uh, about why they didn't need to try and arrest him, mm-hmm. or why they were trying to—I should say—why they were trying to talk to him, which escalated to them trying to arrest him in the chokehold. But, but really, and on, on broad daylight, daytime, they not they ain't scared. On, on broad daylight, the paramedics showed up. Mm-hmm. They they kind of stood around and looked at the man and. Th- well, like, they what is have, going on? From what I understand, there's video evidence of him actually in the ambulance and them not putting any sort of breathing apparatus on him to help resuscitate him. Some people him. were saying they think that he was pretty much dead by the time he hit the ambulance. Wow. It just, yeah. of course, he got pronounced dead on arrival. Mm-hmm. So pretty much if he got announced dead on arrival, that means he died at yeah. either in the ambulance he, he died or on the street. he That's died on the he street. He died on the street. He died on the street. So mm-hmm. it's just, but it's crazy. The, the interaction that cops have with with black men in particular, especially in New York City. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm still believe that most of these police officers are scared of us. 407 So their 16, first 18. reaction to, actually I don't even know why they felt threatened, probably just because he was a big guy. Oh, 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 I don't know what to do. Let me just choke him, you know, it's, which is crazy. I was talking to a couple of um, trained security guards, a couple of guys, one of them, was out the military, another guy, he did did security professional. He was like, he honestly believes that these police officers are really not being trained correctly because it says some of the stuff they're doing is just, it doesn't even make sense. You know, he's not even a trained a policeman, but he's a trained security guard. And he was like, they, it, it's stupid the stuff they do. You know, they don't even, they just like, their first reaction is just to, to, to pummel somebody, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like not even trying to defuse the situation or, 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 you know, calm it down. It's just, just aggressive with it, you know, just, just rush them. It's like, I guess because the assumption, and and this is an assumption, but I guess their assumption is that they know this is going to escalate or they know that this is going to get out of hand Mm -hmm. and crazy. Soon, right. Right. So I should go ahead and act first before they do anything to me. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy. Which is sad. Right. Which I don't know. But like, you know, I try not to question that because, you know, I'm not a police officer. I don't don't know Mm -hmm. what their mentality is. I know they put their lives on the line every day, but. Mm I mean, even still, when you see something not, like this, though, I'm it's not like questioning police officers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, what I'm saying. But, but you got to question the the consistency. Yeah, yeah, you do. Of which black men seem to be get, on get, the deadly end, right? Get, mm-hmm. of of what seems the way to they be in, interact mild with confrontations. Us. right? When they especially the way they interact with us, it's, it's, it's like everything just escalates so quick. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, he, I shifted my hand. From my side to my hip, grit up. You know what I'm saying? It's right, like, right. It's a gun. <laughs> you know, it's like it's crazy. Don't have See, an itch. What yeah, you, don't you know. Understand don't is that do they just don't understand how we move. Like they don't move in that way, so they don't understand what we understand. We understand it because we do it. Uh, uh-huh. We've seen people around us that do it. They don't have people around them that 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 they see talk like that or act like us or, you know, we're very confrontational and we raise our voice. We get animated. 
some of them that you know their friends that they grew up around they don't act like that so they don't know if if that's their personality or if they're trying to escalate the situation i mean you know in their defense now speaking on that speaking on that because one of the things if you watch the video it wasn't like when they when they were confronting him he certainly wasn't you know yes you know i'm sorry he, you know he, he, he like you said he was a, he was slightly confrontational now now should we fought him for for not falling back, knowing that you never know what, a, I mean, as a black man, you really never know what a police officer. And so as a black man, your best course of action, typically nine, 100% of the time, really <laughs> should be, yeah. you know, yes, no, my bad, I'm sorry. You know, what can I, you know, that, mm-hmm. not, you know, not no problems here, officer. Exactly. Like, yeah. just I, I think, I think we, we've lived long enough to know that that's the, really the way we need to act. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, is there, do we fault him at all or, or, ch- or at least question the idea of his response to them knowing that history says? It is questionable. Yeah. I, I do think that it is, it is questionable that um, the way he handled the situation could have been a bit different given the history on how African-American men are treated in these sorts of situations. But I also think, going back to um, a previous point, that there should be some sort of cultural sensitivity training. Yeah. Um, not even just in law enforcement, but in all the fields that we work in. Mm-hmm. Uh, understanding and learning the behaviors. I, my sister is a nurse, and she had to take a cultural sensitivity course mm-hmm when um, dealing with different people um, based on their death or how they have to be cared for, what the proper procedure and protocol is. I think that um, that should be the same thing for law enforcement when you said learning their behaviors, Mm -hmm. how they operate, why they may act the way that they do, helping each other to understand what this process is. Because I think um, black men know how officers may feel when they're approached. But officers probably have no idea what they're going to encounter. Right. But see, the thing is, you know, that's why they have black officers, white officers, and Asian, Spanish, whatever, whatever. But the black cops are worse than the white cops, and and, and you know, in a black person's opinion. So yeah, sometimes they are. You know, you really can't. I mean, I, I'm not going to say that's not a good idea. You can't do that, but. Even with that being done, you still got the white cop, the, the black cops that's worse in the black neighborhood because they feel like, oh, well, I did better. You can too. Mm-hmm. You yeah. just got to get off your butt and be like me, type thing. I, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't. I'm not for saying that. Saying that's what they say, but if you go in the black community and you ask them who is the worst, they'll tell you black cops worse than the white cops. So, I mean, four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. It's like I said. It's it's crazy. It's tragic. Um, obviously, they were marching in New York. Uh, Sharpton is on the beat. He's uh, front and center. Not a surprise, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a stomping ground. He's, he's, supposed to be he's front yeah. and center. Uh, yeah. You're right. In New York, he should be the first one to speak on it. Mm-hmm. So so we'll see what happens. I'd imagine uh, they they have to do an investigation. <laughs> The video is just not enough. They need to, <laughs> they need to do right. more research. Mm-hmm. That's viral. They need, they need to do more research. Right. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, at the end of the day, you know, they have there, there's procedures in place, so you get that. But hopefully this does not come back sideways with all the evidence that is clearly visible in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think if it did come back sideways, I think there would be some, some trouble, mm-hmm. some trouble in the streets. Because when there's live video, that's, that's the thing about today. You really can't do nothing crazy today because everything, everybody has a cell phone. Everybody <laughs> has a camera on that cell phone. Everybody has a video recorder on that cell phone. So anything you do is me- immediate, recorded immediately. So um, Unless you're George Zimmerman. Right. Unless you're the police. Right. I was going to say, as so soon as, if you be out in public and somebody get loud, if you turn around, somebody recording. This is true. Somebody's recording. This is true. Somebody says, what? <laughs> <laughs> They're not police, calling the police. World star. No. Yeah, I mean, because, exactly. And remember exactly. now, Oscar Grant, that was recorded too. Mm-hmm. And what that guy, I think one of those cops just now got off recently mm-hmm. from, uh, it's just. Have y'all seen, uh, I mean, Sometimes I know it's all the subject. Y'all, y- y'all saw the movie? I did. did I, I can't. I saw can't. it. I it's, can't. It's, and I, I haven't seen this, the video, um, Fruitville, Fruitville Station. Fruitville Station, either. yeah. yeah. It, it, I, I can't. Seen it, it is, it's a good movie. I can't about it. It's, it's almost like, because, you know, you, you expect it for this big climatic moment, but it kind of happens. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hold on, what just happened? 
you know, and then you really realize what just happened. It was like, it was no. Because, you know, you're waiting for this big build up, like a, a do the right thing with a big right, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But it wasn't that. It's like everything's going on. Then you just bang, was like, hold on, what just happened? You in know what I'm saying? In front of everybody. Yeah. Like, I mean, there were plenty of witnesses, it was on camera. So same thing with this with this uh, guy. It's on camera. It's right there. And how many cops were on him? I think I counted what four or five. I, I think I counted at least four. And one when they got him to the ground, that one slam to his head. I I was like, well, that right there could have been it. Before mm-hmm. while they before they even went even further into the video. I'm like, my God. I mean, I know he was a big guy, but really, guys. That's what I say. They, is... they scared him. I really believe it. Like, I'm just know. just straight scared of us mm-hmm. we'll see what happens we'll watch it and see uh, definitely that you know, was a story that. for them also we slammed them and you know how they get back to the station and start to talk you should saw that you know a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. couple more stories here a couple more florida stories this time these two things happened in florida you got the, the father who who came back to the house saw his son being mm. abused mm. and then beat his attacker with, with the hand claps for that one within huh? seconds <laughs> <laughs> within seconds uh, <laughs> seconds of his life mm-hmm. I was reading the story and he basically was saying how actually his son prevented him from actually killing the kid because um, his son stepped in between him and said no dad or, or something to the effect uh, to, uh, to stop beating him um, and then at that point he stopped and, and then called the cops He's back in the news, though, because GoFundMe, GoFundMe. Yes! He decided to create a GoFundMe account asking for a million dollars, put his son's picture up on the on the account and everything. How are you going to put your son picture that just got abused up? Yeah. Talking about a million dollars. Then, <laughs> I don't know, maybe a conscience for? got to what him. What is it for? What was it for? He's claimed he was raising charity money uh, to support his son or something to that effect. Sounded it, in all honesty, it sounded like he was trying to raise a million dollars. Trying to raise a million dollars. <laughs> exactly. Exploiting this situation. And, 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 then, and then they said he then he took it down and then he only put up a hundred thousand and then eventually he just took it all he just took it down altogether. But really now he needs to be beat. <laughs> right. Now that is just ridiculous Sir, right yeah. there. Like you, you everybody was like, Okay. And people would have probably reward. done something on oh, their yeah. own. Yeah. Right. You couldn't wait. No. <laughs> you said, no. I've got to start this page today. Right. Yes. Exactly. Because I need these I'm funds. a hero right. now. I'm yes. hot. I'm hot now. Let me, let me my do My name it. is everywhere. Work let for Jeremy Meeks. Let me see what I can do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like you said, he put his son's picture Put up his there. son's yeah. picture on the website. I the son that, that was sexually the abused. Son that's right. Sexually See, that, that's the thing that kind of puts it over. Yeah. It's yeah. like when you kind of halfway say, well, maybe, but when he put the son, I'm just like, all right, you, it's, it's, it's nothing good about this. Mm. Mm-hmm. Trying, like, but the, and that's local, too. That's Daytona. Daytona. Yes. Yeah. But the assailant's face. Yeah, he put in some work. That yeah. Did you see the guy? Yeah. The guy is a, a big muscle uh, body. Um, well, oh, I I just, he looks like a guy him. that works out. Four or five times a week. I'll just say that. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of times a week to work out. Face. And he looks like a guy that works out four or five times a week. No, so I, I he just, so he is he he's solid. He I think they identified him as a family friend. <laughs> yeah, the guy that the guy that was there, he's a family friend. He lived next door to the family. And so he would come over and hang out often. He was a next door neighbor. So, uh, but that's one of them things. It's 2014. Why is an 18 year old trying to hang with my? It sounded like the um, the from what I read in the article, some kind of way the the person that the 18 year old lives with is like a girlfriend or fiance of the father that that beat him up. So they were very so he was very familiar with the kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it wasn't like it was some kid off the street oh, no, that came I, I over to the house. That, but he, he was, was very still. familiar with the kid, and for all intents and purposes, you know. It would sound like he, you know, he thought that, you know, he thought the kid was an upstanding little, you know, kid, you know, blah blah blah, you know, he's ne- next door neighbor. Somehow, somehow or another, he's attached to the the fiance or the girlfriend. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, he, so he was he was in a safe zone with this kid, and th- which is why he allowed him to be around. You his son wonder so often. how long this has been going on? Three so years. Say three years. It oh, went on for three that, years. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. So it was three years and prior to part. when he got his behind whooped. Mm. Mm-hmm. And the kid's eleven now. How old is the boy? I think oh, he's I can't 11. remember. Mm. 11 or 12, something like that. That oh, is just So you may be wondering why he really he's 11. started. See, and I hate to say this, but see, wow. when you was creeping out the dough, trying to go handle your business, you see what happened? 
So you run the next door. Hey, yeah, go over there and watch my boy. You understand what I'm trying to say? Well, I thought he said he went out to get a sandwich this time around. Came I, home. I was looking at that, but the time they three said that the beating happened, sandwiches. it was like at 1 a.m. in the morning. Oh, three okay. Three years worth of sandwiches. <laughs> now, see, <laughs> now, see, we don't know what happened prior to. But that's what I'm trying to say. This particular like instance. Like he said, oh, that's his girlfriend. I said, he running next door. Can you watch my son? Or they may have been playing video games they together. They were playing video games. You know, like up said, until they, it's summertime. They were very familiar to each He's other. He's over here at the house. It doesn't sound crazy. You've got older cousins. You've got older family members right. and friends who, you know, you may sound do like those that things was his with. No, it no, no. Sound, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to I'm just go saying, there. three years, the boy don't say nothing. Then he stop you from killing the boy? He's a child. Let's, let's be fair yeah. now, sir. Now, I'm not gonna go that far. Let's be but fair. But what I'm yeah. my, children, my, my, children, I ain't this happens to children all the time, mm-hmm. and a lot of times children are scared for whatever reason to say to say anything to to a grown adult. He was, this was he had to be about eight years old when this started, so to refer to him as a boyfriend that's come on now. Yeah, that's I a bit much. I mean, what is a boyfriend? We hang out. Not at eight years. No, old. No, no, okay. not at eight. I wouldn't years say old. that, but that's, mean, but that's what I'm saying. Not, like, you've never a, seen a gay eight year old. As, I'm just saying, as a parent. As a parent, though, when you, when you gotta watch what your 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 um sometimes your selfish uh, uh motives are when you want to quick to try to grab a baby babysitter, you understand what I'm tra- that's what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. because you you obviously you know if you you mess with the, the um, girl next door three years ago two years ago you don't want to leave your eight nine year old at the house by itself it's convenient hey can you go go next door and play video games with my son. Now I got a house clear. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. Yeah. That's, that makes that, sense. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Handing off your responsibility. Right. And as a result, this is something that's Yeah, and, and, and I'm not trying to say, okay, it's the dad's fault. I'm not saying that, but I'm, that's what I'm saying. You, you have to have watch. To be careful. You have to watch careful. those type of things when you're so quick to go run out the house and, oh, you can go watch my son. You don't know who, you don't know, you know, you don't know. You just don't. Yeah. And look, to. G- jump on that as well. A story today I found out a teen missionary from o- Oklahoma. Yeah. He confessed, well, he's confronted, but he confessed of molesting and raping little boys and little girls in a Kenyan orphanage. He went over to Kenya as for a mission trip. They He went several times, and this whole time he's been molesting these kids um and then finally this last trip something was off one of the the counselors there just noticed something and asked one of the students like what is going on like what's is something wrong is he doing something wrong and they they told him and he just confessed he's like yep i've been doing this and one of the kids he raped or molested and or molested was is hiv positive and so Mm. technically Mm -mm -mm. This happened in Africa, so and now he's back in Oklahoma, but he's in jail now. They're gonna try to keep him in jail and press charges on him here in, in the states. But well, why wouldn't they send him back to Africa and face them charges? Well, that's what I would well, do. I'd send him back I to mean, Africa. I'd send him back to nah, Kenya. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd yeah. be some quick. Justice. I would, I would mm-hmm. extradite Spear him to the head. But it just goes to show here <laughs> they wouldn't he even was. Be, they wouldn't. They probably wouldn't even be that nice <laughs> for oh, a gosh. mission. They, they wouldn't be that nice. They wouldn't be that nice. It's like that'll dude, be easy. And this, the kids, the ages were like from four to nine, boys and girls. Mm. Just, just uh, that's a predator. That is a predator. You're talking about boys and girls. That's a real. Predator. And he had, he's mm-hmm. pictures holding these kids. He's yep. over there. Just you think, okay, like this teenage kid going over for a mission and doing good. Not like you said, already. not all people so are you there mean to help tell me you. He, he out there getting kids drunk with the quarters that I'm sending every month. Sir, I'm okay. sending this man. Turn on, how do you turn off your own mic? Month. Let me see. So and inappropriate. What button and do hooch. we push? Oh my God! What button do we push to turn him off? Uh, really? He's, he's got all the power today. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. He has all the buttons, and <laughs> we can turn him today. off. You're not allowed to come back in. One last story. Oh. One last story. We, you know, in Ocala, they just passed the law: sagging pants is a crime, uh, punishable by uh, up to six months in jail. <laughs> Uh, no. What, what do y'all think about that one? Well, that's Big. already a lot here in Orlando. You get six months in jail in Orlando for sagging pants? Um, I know there's, I there's something out there. Former Senator Gary Siplin passed that here. And that is one yeah, of he, the most he, he notable things he that he did while he was in the Florida legislature. And I think the penalty is not jail. It's a um, a fine 
a citation and then there are other steps after that but I that's knew. currently um a law here in orlando they what don't about, in, they don't enforce about, it though what about <laughs> jail, jail time well i'm sure that's something else that is as a result if you are a repeat offender for having saggy pants but yeah it's right there. Violators will be forced to pay five hundred dollars or face jail time of six just, months. Oh, well, there it is. Or we just get a belt, whoop them, and then give them the belt when we done. That just sounds a little bit more practical. That's what they would do. Because if Kenya. you, you if you don't got five hundred dollars, why do you care if somebody hand you a five hundred dollar bill? Or if you do have five hundred dollars and you have no intentions of paying it, why do you care them, if somebody hand you a five hundred dollar bill? You can't whoop them, brother. Why not? <laughs> yeah, no whooping. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Whoopings are no longer allowed, sir. <laughs> but so how do we fix the situation? Well, I mean, they're going to sag their pants. And I don't know how many police officers are really stopping. That's what I'm saying. I have right. never seen Men. it before. You go up and down. But that's, but that's go the down Pie has a silver star. All you're doing is looking at underwear. See, that's one of the things that, you know, when when you get stopped by the police, they tell you, I can find a reason to take, to you, take to jail. you to jail. I yeah. can find something. Yeah, that's and it. and that's just something that if I feel like enforcing it right now, mm-hmm. I can if I want to. Mm-hmm. You mouthing off talking that trash and your pants tagging, come here. You're going to jail because that's against the law. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that just gives them a reason to mess with black people, in my opinion. No, a black man created this law here in the state of Florida. His no, name is okay, Gary Zipplin. Okay. That, that's how well, it works. I was that's reading a, on that. They make and that, the that, black that, man create the law, even though the white man's on oh. His law, His <laughs> law is in effect for schools. <laughs> it's in effect for schools. So it bans saggy pants in schools is what it does. And uh, That's first, why I say whoop him and give him a belt. So if you're in school, a first, time, a first time offender gets a verbal warning, a verbal warning. A second time offender gets banned from electro, uh, extracurricular activities for five days. The third time is an in school suspension. So it's this this law is citywide though. This has nothing to do with school. So citywide, if they catch you with wearing saggy pants, uh, you can. Like I said, up to jail time. That's the thing that got me. Really, you gonna send somebody to jail? What you in jail for, man? I, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. My pants. I stand. I, I live my bill at home. <laughs> I stand correct. The fine starts at twenty five dollars and can be added up to two hundred dollars, as well as forty hours community service. Right. Because mm-hmm. the tourists were complaining um, about you know sagging pants because they surely do not sag their pants overseas. So that's what I know. They on. just wear them up to their knees. Mm-hmm. Well, um, are they wear the little short? They still wearing the short shorts to Larry yeah, Bird and Magic them, Johnson. Wear, they wear them huggers. Yeah, that, they still. You can still see they. What, uh, what we need to do is just. I'll, 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 let me be honest with you. I rather your sack of pants and wear the huggers, please. <laughs> no, cause no. It, it, you got to choose. You want to see their man package or you want to see their butt? Oh God. No, the, neither. It, what, exactly. what we need to do you. is is just neither. keep reminding people where the sagging pants came from. Uh, it was a jail thing. Prison. It was yeah, a prison thing to to let people know in prison. You open for business. That you were open for business. <laughs> That's where it came from. Yeah. If you want to let people know you're open for business in prisons, you sagged your pants. That's where it came from. Kids need to know those lessons, yeah. and hopefully, being understanding where it comes from, and then what what you potentially are associated with, maybe that education will remind them Stack why. Up. That's not the yeah. business. You know what they're going to tell you? You, tell them that. <laughs> you know what they're going to tell you? You know what they're going to tell you? What? I said, you know what they're going to tell you when you tell them that? What you trying to say? I'm gay? <laughs> hey, no, we're telling you to pull your pants. Uh, pants. Pull your I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, that's how the young, young folks come in. What you trying to say? I'm gay well, or something? I'm trying to that ain't you. what it mean when I do it. I'll tell you what the assumption is. That ain't is, what it brother. mean when I do it. What you trying to say? What you trying to say? Then you hear the click, click. I want to, I'm telling you what the, the brothers that's been in the pen, what they thinking when they see you wearing second pants. That's hey, what I'm trying to they, tell they, you. They'll learn when they get in. So, uh, yeah, man, that's that's what's up, though. Hey, I want to thank y'all better, Miss Bernie, yes. thank Mr. You. King, younger brother, for being here with me tonight, man. This is Real Family Talk. This is your host, Jay Real. This is what we do every Wednesday night, 9 p.m., right here on WOKB 1680, your urban empowerment and inspiration station. What you say, brother? We got three minutes, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, my I got bad. a rant too. Oh, I my bad. What, what, what's your rant, brother? Let's see what you got to say, brother. I I just want to rant off about, the chain uh, tonight. I'm about sure LeBron. Be, uh, I want to rant about uh, LeBron. I told y'all he was going to Cleveland, uh, and, and they would be a better team for it. Let's see how many Miami fans we got now. That's all I want to say. Because <laughs> a lot of people 
Then they been to Miami and all they knew was the beach. And then the LeBron went all of a sudden. They were Heat fans. So let's see how many Cavalier fans and Drew Carey fans we really got up in the building. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of Cavalier fans because they were LeBron fans. They, they weren't were Heat fans. fans. Correct. Heat, exactly. Well, yeah, I guess so because that's how most women do it. Women say I like t- team. I like players <laughs> and I like the, the pretty colors. Men <laughs> like teams. If you are a man that only like players. You ain't no man, okay? You need to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I a man? Because I like players. I'm a man. But I don't if the like player team. makes the like, team, what does that matter? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man and I don't you like don't team. You don't watch football and be like, well, you know, well, well dang. The I team don't. is about the players, not back. about anything no, else. No, it's about the team. No, no, no. Right. not anymore. It's about no. the team. I would say like this. To I me, let me any t- of those Let me go ahead and get this. Let me say my rant. This is why I don't like teams no more. They say the players ain't got no loyalty. No, the owners don't have no loyalty. The owners go switch and choose as much as they want to, so the players should have the same option. So with the player I like, wherever you go, that's who I root for. And so LeBron is in Cleveland, so you'll be a Cleveland fan today. I ain't necessarily no Cleveland <laughs> fan, but, you know, if LeBron win, I'm happy. If he don't win, I'm still happy. I'm so, still a know, Knicks fan it is I what die. It is. The Knickerbockers. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like, and, I, and I, like I, I said, I just fan. like players. If Miami Who are you? good. No, I, to like, be fair, I like D-Wade. To be know? fair, I think a lot of people are still going to be Heat fans. Um, I, don't, I don't really see the fan base dying. It, it, when, you th- when you look at their team, they're still going to be in the playoffs. I think they probably at least still make it to the second round. Um, and then depending on how quickly some of these other teams come together, it's a good chance they could even get back to the finals for that matter. It's the they, East. Exactly. Now, whether or not they get to the big game, whether or not they get to the big game, win another championship, eh, we'll, we'll see. But, but they're still going to be good enough to compete, in, in, especially in the East. They're still going to be good enough to compete, certainly and probably make it out of the first round, maybe even into the second round. And with a little luck, you know, back to the finals. So, you know, I don't, I don't think they're going to miss a beat. They'll too be much. Fine. They'll, the they'll Heat be all right. Had won championships before LeBron, they won't, with LeBron, right. and after. They won't have press conferences anymore. They will. Four, five, yeah, six, seven, might, and eight championships. They got D Wade, but, but there ain't no Shaq down there. <laughs> hey, man. Like I said, we'll see y'all next week. J Real signing off. WOKV 1688. Turn off my mic early. <laughs> You can follow us on Facebook, Real Family Talk. You can follow us on Twitter, Real Family Talk. The website, realfamilytalk.weebly.com. W-O-K-B, Winter Garden, Orlando. Yeah, this song is for everyone who's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and you're not ashamed to sing about it. Yo, Cliff, take me to the verse.